Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a web crawler in Java uh, and we're going to use a third-party library called JSOUP that will help making it easy to parse HTML. Um, we're going to continue with using recursion as a tool and you'll see that by traversing or crawling the web um, recursively um, it would be a lot it's, it's a lot easier uh, than trying to do it iteratively <clears throat> there are some set you know uh, limits to this approach um, you know with recursion if you keep recursing you could hit a stack overflow uh, so I will mitigate that a little bit but in my program which will use recursion the, the problem exists if the program were to run long enough it will hit a stack overflow uh, all right, so let's jump right into it. Um, first, I'm going to come over here, and usually in these videos, I do this up front. But some of you have been asked me to, you know, how do you, where do you get these libraries from? How do you know where to download them? Here, I've gone to jsoup.org. I've gone, I go to the download uh, location, and here I'm going to keep this download jsoup. You can tell I've already downloaded it once, but whatever. Uh, and now I'm going to open up my IDE. And uh, we're going to create a new project. It's going to be a Java project. And we're going to call it uh, Web Spider for fun. And here we are. New Java class called Web Spider. And we will come here in IntelliJ to add the dependency on the library and I believe I have it in my downloads folder I will come here all the way down to jsoup jsoup jsoup.jar open hit OK and here we go alright so um, First, let's look up the definition of a web crawler here really quick. A web crawler, sometimes called a spider, is an internet bot that systematically browses the World Wide Web, typically for the purpose of web indexing. So we're going to, our program API is going to be set one uh, such that um, we're going to specify a start starting URL, and our program will then crawl that URL looking for other URLs embedded in it, and then recursively do the same thing to each of those URLs. and. Uh, build up a, an index in memory and then eventually write that out to disk. Okay, um, so let's jump in and it might actually be helpful for us to start with our main method so that you guys can see what the interface looks like. So it's a public static void main string args and I'm going to try to do this in less than a hundred lines of code. Um, and I'm going to say final uh, web spider spider is equal to new web spider and I'm gonna say new URL we're gonna have a starting URL I'm gonna use Java's URL API which is built in I'm gonna say HTTP and will you we will use um, Gutenberg dot org and if you aren't familiar with Gutenberg it's a fantastic project out there uh, that will that basically has a bunch of free ebooks. So um, <clears throat> oh, I got an unhandled exception here. So let's just have our main say throws IO exception. Okay. Uh, what did I miss? New UR. Oh, I, that's right. Well because I haven't made the constructor yet. All right, so uh, here we go. So let's uh, first let's create some member fields, private final set of URL, we'll just call it links, and private final long start time. You'll see what this is in a minute. And we'll say private web spider Final URL, start URL, 
this.links is equal to new hash set. And this.start time is now it's just record the time that we start doing the crawl in the constructor. And finally, let's call the crawl method. And um, here I'll say init URLs. Start URL. Okay. So a lot of methods don't exist yet here, so let's go ahead and create that method. And init URLs is going to be a set of URLs. And we're just basically going to say, we, we passed in a single URL and we're just going to put that into a set. Okay, so um, there's different ways you can do this. Uh, I think that there's like a collections.singleton, which will return uh, start URL. Let's see if that, does this return? Oh yeah, it returns a set, which is perfect. So um, I'll just say return. There we go. And we're going to have a crawl method here. Um, so let's write that. This is where a majority of the work happens here for us. And so, um, so what we're going to say here is if the URLs, um, let's, if the URLs is not empty, right? If the URLs that you got are not empty, then new URLs for the new hash set, right? And we'll say try catch. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to say this.links.addall uh, the URLs. Okay. I'm going to add those URLs and then we're going to say for final URL URL in the URLs what are we going to do? We're going to say final document And this document is going to come from JSOOP. This notion of a document is going to come from JSOOP. We're going to say final document is equal to jsoup.connect. And we're going to connect to the URL.toString. And we're going to call get on this. And there's an unhandled exception here, of course. So I'm going to be actually, <clears throat> I'm going to do something that's not a great idea. I'm going to just write a catch-all. Okay, I'm just going to say final exception or error ignored. And whatever happens, uh, it does, whatever goes wrong here, we're just going to say, I, I don't care. I want you to keep crawling. Yeah, if it's a bad URL or if it's malformed, I really don't care. Okay, so we're going to call this the document, right? And this is part of the API of JSOOP. If you aren't familiar with it, I suggest you read it. Um, for brevity's sake, I'm not going to really describe too much uh, what the uh, APIs are, but you can go off and read them on your own. But uh, just to give you a sense of how powerful it is, you'll see what we can do here. Final elements. links on page is equal to document dot select and we're going to use a selection criteria as a string we're going to say give me all the hrefs which means the links off of the page okay there's other things that you can query off of the page if you want as well okay and then all we're going to say is for each one of the elements for final element element in the elements, or links on page, sorry, right? We're going to say final 
string URL text is equal to page dot attribute um, oh I'm sorry uh, element attribute uh, and the uh, attribute we're going to grab is the href and we're going to say final URL discovered URL is equal to new URL of the URL text. All right, we're just going to convert that URL as a text into a Java URL POJO, and then we're going to say new URLs dot add discovered URL. Right, and then finally, that's really it. That's really all there is. And then outside of the catch block, we're going to recursively call crawl on the new URLs. So I'm going to explain this in a second here. Um, and let's see what else can we do to make this interesting. Oh, when we enter this method, we are going to want to remove from the list of URLs that we call into here with, with those that are already inventory. So we're going to say URLs that remove all this.links. Okay, because link this.links really is our inventory of all of the URLs we've already visited. We don't want to just keep visiting URLs in a circular fashion, right? So we're going to remove from the set of URLs that we want to visit those which we have already visited, okay? So this is a very small program. It's really almost like a script more than a program, right? Um, so when we enter in after the add all, I think it would be nice, um, the beginning of the for loop to say system dot add uh, time is equal to, and then, uh, Let's say system dot current time noise minus the start time, just to see time passing, right? And let's also add connected to just show you what the URL that we're connecting to uh, URL. Mm, what event? Operator. Plus cannot be applied to Java links but to void. Huh. What did I miss? Mm, let's see. Debugging on the fly is also fun. If I had this, would I be okay? So let's say plus foo. We still okay? Yeah, we are. Uh, connected to, and then, there we go. Okay, so let's make it <clears throat> so that this can really come into view here. And I want to say, so now that we built, after we build up the inventory, recursively because notice uh, right so crawl eventually so here let's just review the algorithm really quickly here um, we're going to come into crawl we're going to remove from the list of URLs to crawl and we, remember we start with just uh, Gutenberg we're going to remove um, the websites we visited already um, we haven't visited Gutenberg so this really has no impact on the what's in, contained in URLs then we're going to make sure it's not empty and if it's not em empty, we're going to create a new set of URLs. We're going to add that U Gutenberg to the list of links that we visited. And then we're going to um, go ahead and enumerate all of the URLs that we currently have, currently just Gutenberg. And then we're going to say, go to the Gutenberg URL, get all the URLs there, right? And for each one of them, uh, all you have to do is repeat the same process over again, okay? So that's really it, and it's kind of a cool program, I think. Um, last thing that we'll do is we will write the results out to a file. Um, 
Actually, you know what, I'll leave that as an exercise for you guys to do. Uh, it's really simple to write that out to a file. It's, you can look that up on the internet and because I'm not going to sit here and watch, show you the entire program execute because it takes a while to execute, um, there's no point in really writing it out uh, to disk. Uh, so let's just say we're just going to uh, create the spider which calls crawl and let's see if we can run this program and see if it does anything. Okay. So here you can see we started with Gutenberg and off of Gutenberg uh, it already discovered some URLs off of the page. Each of these is something that you can click on, right? I can click on bookshelf and it, it takes me there. Okay. And this program is going to execute. It actually executes for quite some time before it terminates from the Gutenberg URL. Um, yeah, so basically what we learned is that um, how to build a simple uh, web crawler uh, and we used recursion to make the program a lot simpler. Of course there are some limitations here as I pointed out. Uh, you can get a stack overflow if you continue to keep recursing. Um, the way that I can mitigate that, uh, there's many different ways you can mitigate that. One simple way is just go to your uh, edit configurations for your execution and in the VM options you can increase the size of the stack by just saying dash xx dash xss and then give it a valid size maybe like 256 megabytes. Uh, so if you run out of, if you get a stack overflow in this program you could do that to increase it. Alternatively you can always, uh, you can always transform any recursive algorithm to an iterative one, uh, but it does take some considerable thought and care. Okay, so uh, please do rate, comment, and uh, like the videos, and I will see you guys next time.